in Kondrama. This video has been produced from a free article that was indexed in National Library of Medicine, PubMed. Citation, Beyond ENL, Varicalo M. Incondroma. Updated 2023 August 4. In, Stat Pearls, Internet. Treasure Island, FL, Stat Pearls Publishing, 2023 Jan. Available from, https colon slash slash www.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov slash books slash nbk536938 slash continuing education activity inchondromas are benign tumors of unknown etiology that occur in the hyaline cartilage in bones of endochondral origin inchondromas account for approximately 3% of bone tumors and up to 13% of benign bone tumors these tumors are usually solitary, central, metaphyseal lesions of tubular bones, favoring the small bones of the hand and feet, followed by the femur and humerus. Inchondromatous tumors typically begin and grow in childhood arising from rests of growth plate cartilage or chondrocytes that proliferate and enlarge, then stop growing but remain present throughout adulthood. This activity reviews the clinical presentation, diagnosis, and treatment of inchondromas and highlights the role of the interprofessional team in providing patient care in clinical settings. Introduction. Inchondromas are cartilaginous tumors of the benign bone tumor family. Common benign bone tumors include inchondroma, osteochondroma, chondroblastoma, and chondromyxoid fibroma, all hail from a cartilage origin. Inchondromas are medullary cavity tumors classified in an overarching category of chondromas, benign tumors of hyaline cartilage occurring in bones of endochondral origin. These tumors are usually solitary, central, metaphyseal lesions of tubular bones, favoring the small bones of the hand and feet, followed by the femur and humerus. These are also the most common primary bone tumors of the hand. In the hands, they most commonly involve the proximal phalanges, followed by the middle phalanges, metacarpals, and then distal phalanges. The hand in chondromas are unique as they may also demonstrate cellular atypia, confusing the histopathological picture with that of chondrosarcoma. In chondromatous tumors typically begin and grow in childhood arising from rests of growth plate cartilage or chondrocytes that proliferate and enlarge, then stop growing but remain present throughout adulthood. Some benign bone lesions do, however, have malignant potential. Inchondromas and osteochondromas can transform into chondrosarcoma. The lesions are, however, low-grade chondrosarcoma and are called atypical cartilage tumors, as they rarely metastasize to other regions of the body. Etiology. Inchondromas are benign, lobulated neoplasms of hyaline cartilage, most commonly occurring in the short tubular bones of the hands and feet. The femur and humerus are the two most common sites for long bone involvement. These tumors can, however, arise in any bone formed from cartilage. Inchondromas are the most prevalent intraosseous cartilage tumors, accounting for approximately 3% of bone tumors and 13% of benign bone tumors. Most inchondromas begin in the medullary portion of the diaphysis, arising from ectopic cartilaginous nests in the metaphyseal region, and expand outward towards the cortex. Enlarging lesions may cause a pathologic fracture. The terminal differentiation of the chondrocytes gets dysregulated during the growth plate development in inchondroma. Pathophysiology Inchondromatosis possesses associations with somatic mutations in isocitrate dehydrogenase 1, IDH1, and 2, IDH2, genes. The mutations are rare and often sporadic. Isocitrate dehydrogenase is an enzymatic component of the tricarboxylic acid, TCA, cycle functioning to convert isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. Mutations in IDH1 and IDH2 cause malfunction of this enzyme resulting in increased levels of the oncome metabolite D2-hydroxyglutarate, D2-HG. D2-HG competitively inhibits alpha-ketoglutarate-dependent enzymes. 
DNA hypermethylation and histone modification ensue, affecting differentiation. Inhibition of the osteogenic differentiation of mesenchymal stem cells occurs via elevations in D2HG resulting from IDH1 and IDH2 mutations. All in all, blocking osteogenic differentiation during the formation of the skeleton results in cartilaginous tumor formation. Treatment Management Management of symptomatic enchondroma L lesions typically involves surgical management in the form of simple curettage with bone grafting. The bone graft used may be allogeneic bone, autogenous, or synthetic bone substitutes. The impact of the type of graft on healing, recurrence, complications, and malignant transformation is unknown. Currently, no standardized algorithm for surgical treatment of enchondroma exists. Also, the necessity of curettage with grafting remains unproven. Also, it is not necessary to ask for routine radiographic follow-up for asymptomatic lesions. For symptomatic lesions and those with pathologic fractures, surgical management improves outcomes and helps establish a definitive diagnosis. However, the timing of surgical intervention has also not been shown to have significant benefits. Early and delayed surgical intervention was shown to have similar functional outcomes. During surgical management, one needs to stick to the principles of tumor surgery to prevent tumor dissemination. The surgery is performed under tourniquet control without exsanguination using an ESMARCH bandage. After the curettage, various adjuncts can be used that supposedly kill the residual tumor cells and help reduce recurrence. They include phenol, liquid nitrogen, cryotherapy, polymethyl metacrylate, and electrocautery. However, there is no data to suggest which adjunct is superior among the various treatment options. A frozen section is not recommended in these surgeries. After the curettage, the bone void can be filled using either autograft, allograft, bone substitute, or bone cement. Some studies have described leaving the void without filling it with grafts, cement with equivalent functional outcomes. The proponents of the latter theory suggest that it saves surgical time, prevent donor site morbidity, and prevents complications related to the introduction of foreign materials, in the case of allografts and bone cement. Prophylactic intervention aiming to prevent impending fracture via internal fixation methods is unknown and controversial. Retrospective studies have formed a basis to guide the indications, but the limits of these guidelines are the use of plain radiographs, subjective patient information, and inadequate understanding of the biomechanical factors involved in the neoplastic process. The Mirrells criteria were developed to quantify the risks of fracture pertaining to bone neoplasms. These criteria consider the location, pain, lesion type, and lesion size. A score greater than 8 dictates a significant fracture risk and a need for a prophylactic internal fixation. A bone tumor with a score less than 7 can undergo observation according to these criteria. In applying these criteria, the defined fracture risk uses the load-bearing requirement of the bone divided by its load-bearing capacity. The parameters for load-bearing requirement and capacity were also stipulated and analyzed. The patient's age, weight, activity level, and ability to protect the site dictate the load-bearing requirement. The load-bearing capacity depends on the amount of bone loss, modulus of the remaining bone, and location of the defect with respect to the type of load applied. Differential diagnosis. When considering a lesion to be an enchondroma, the clinician must also consider bone infarction on the differential as both may have a similar radiographic appearance. Tuberculous dactylitis and low-grade chondrosarcoma are also considerations in patients with enchondroma who have pain without the presence of fracture at their index presentation. 30. The other differential diagnosis includes tumor-like conditions, including giant cell reparative granuloma and other benign tumors like giant cell tumor and chondroblastoma. Prognosis. Solitary enchondromatous lesions are typically self-limited. Recurrence is rare following curettage and bone grafting. However, 
Higher recurrence risks are associated with enchondroma lesions involving long bones. Also, the recurrence rates and chances of malignant transformation increase with enchondromatosis, including Ollier disease and Mafuchi syndrome. Thanks for watching.